Greetings, this is Richard Ross from AccessLearningZone.com. I just released version 2.0 of my very popular Access Amortization template. If you have a need to calculate loan amortizations, well, this template is for you. The purpose of this video is to give you a quick walkthrough of how to use all the features in this template. The database has a list of clients. You can put all your clients in here. If you want to add a new client, click down here. Put someone in here like Jim Kirk. And of course, all the other fields you want to add information for, email, phone, address, all that stuff. You can mark clients inactive or active. This way you don't have to see them or not. Let's say you've got a client who they're finished paying off their loan and you don't want to see them in your list anymore. Well, you can just mark them as inactive. Same thing happens with loans too. You can mark loans active or inactive. So let's add a new loan here for Jim Kirk. Are you sure? Yep. Okay. A lot of are you sure's in this because I don't want people deleting important information. This is the loan form that opens up. You got your client here. You can have your list of providers. I just put one provider in here, ABC Loans. If it's just you, just put you in there. If you work with different providers, put them in there. Description goes here, right? Home loan or whatever. If you want to put notes in here, you can type as much as you want. It's a long text field. Just double click here. That's why it's blue. Anything that's blue, you can double click on it. It'll do something. Double click. It'll bring up the Zoom box, you know, address. You can put the home address in here. Whatever you want. Any information you want in that notes field. All right, let's do a simple loan first. Let's say you're doing a $100,000 loan. Interest rate is 5%. Start date, let's say, is 7-1 uh, of this year. Monthly frequency, of course, you can change this if you want to. Number of payments, defaults to 360 months. That's a 30-year loan. If you want to change it, just come right over here. You can type in the number here if you want to. But if you don't want to do math, type in 20 for the years and hit that button, and it recalculates it for you, just to save you some time from doing some math. I'll put it back to 30 years. Okay. So there you can see your payment amounts up here. Well, let's go ahead and click on Calculate Loan Schedule, and it will generate the schedule for you right down there. Now, let's take a step back. Let's say this was supposed to actually start in May. So May 1 will change that date, too. And I'm using the ISO date standard, which is year, month, day. But it'll display in whatever the short date format on your system is. All right, if I press tab now, notice the calculate loan schedule button turned red. That means it says, hey, you made some changes. And if you try to exit the form right now, it's going to say, wait a minute, you changed the terms of the loan condition. Are you sure you want to do that? All right, so I'll say yes, and it will recalculate everything for me. And now you'll see that these are red. Why? Because these are past due, right? These are now past payments, and they haven't been paid yet, so they show up as red. So let's put some payments in. Let's say they come in and they make a payment for, what's their amount due here? It's uh, $536.82. So let's say they come in and make a payment for $600, okay? When you put a payment in here, you'll see over here there's two checkboxes. This checkbox there is this payment has been applied, all right, which you're going to let the system do for you when you click Apply Payments. This one is extra principal. In other words, you want to put anything that's extra toward just principal only. That'll be an extra principal payment. That'll go in this column. All right, but for now, let's just say it's a regular payment. I'll hit apply. All right, the database puts the 536.82 toward that payment and carries over what's left to the next payment. All right, still past due though. So let's come over here and make that payment. If you double click on this field, it will default it to whatever is either past due or the amount of their next payment. So if I double click right now, it sets it to 473.64. And now I can apply that payment. See, there we go. All right, they come in, they make their next payment, just double click here, puts in the default amount, apply the payment. Then you can put in multiple payments if you want. Like let's say for the next month, they give you 100, then they give you 150, then they send in 50, okay? And then we can apply those all at the same time, and the database puts that money where it goes. Now, let's say they did good at the casino, they want to come in here and put a $10,000 payment down, but they want to pay off some principal. So what we'll do is we'll mark this as extra principal. In other words, it's going to make whatever regular payment is left, and then it'll put the rest toward extra principal. When I apply that, there you go. You can see it, the total payment was 10300 because they'd already paid 300 toward that one, right? The regular was that amount, okay? That much was put toward extra principal. And for this payment, that's how much they paid off in principal and in interest, and then it recalculates the rest of the schedule as you can see now they only have 291 payments left as opposed to the original 360. Their payoff amount is right down here at any given time. You want to see what their payoff amount is as of today's date? There it is. 
Now, normally when you pay over like that, the default isn't to put extra to principal. The default is to carry it over to the next month. So if they did come in normally and gave you $5,000, all right, normally the default is to just carry that all the way down. Okay? But if you want the default to be extra goes to principal, just check that box. And any future payments, if you close this loan, for example, come back into it, all right, you'll see the, the next default payment is going to be extra principal. All right? That's how I like to do mine. Now, you can't just delete these payments, okay, and have this automatically update, all right? It's, it's way too complex. So if you want to delete a payment, if there's a payment that's a mistake, for example, okay, what you have to do is you have to unapply that payment. Now, it's not going to change the amortization schedule, but watch what, what you can do. Say yes. Now, this payment can be deleted or reapplied if you want to. It doesn't matter, all right? But delete that payment, okay? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to recalculate the loan schedule, Say yes, and then you can reapply all the remaining payments, and it puts them where they belong. Okay? That's the easiest way to do that. It's too much of a nightmare calculation-wise to do it anyway else. <laughs> okay, if you have a payment up here that's got to be modified or deleted, just unapply it. Or um, you can go through, if you want to, you can delete all the payments. Okay? That'll recalculate the loan for you, and then just put the payments back in. Whichever you prefer. But if you got to modify a payment in the middle somewhere, unapprove it, delete it, recalculate the loan schedule, and then just reapply the remaining payments. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, let's talk about additional costs. Additional costs are things like taxes, insurance, uh, you know, the stuff that you have to add in every month. You could use this for late fees if you want to. So let's say for the first year they have to pay their taxes and whatever. And after that, you're going to recalculate it every year. So you can just come in here under additional costs. Okay, start period, end period. So if they've got an additional cost of, let's say, $150 a month for the entire life of the loan, you can just leave it like that. Okay, but if that only applies to the first year, then just say, starting with payment one, ending with payment 12, it's that. And then let's say, or let's say their, their taxes are included, right? So maybe make it 550. And then 13 to 360 is something else. Okay. This doesn't check for overlap, so be careful. You got to be smart using this. And if you want to put a late fee in there, okay, let's say uh, let's say you want to put a late fee in for uh, month two, okay. Just gets a little complicated, but watch. You can do one to one was five fifty, month two and two only was let's say six hundred because they have that late fee, and you can go three to twelve is then back down to five fifty. See how you got to do this? And if you close this and reopen it, it'll resort. Okay, so this is where the extra payments can be added to the, to the schedule. But of course, you got to recalculate. So hit the recalculate button and it'll put those in there. See, there's 550, 600. Okay, 550 again, and then down to 120. That's how you can change this additional payment there. Okay, so they come in, they make their payment, double click, apply. Now they're... Oh, oh, look what happened. See, okay, it was marked extra principal. So that entire amount that was extra got put to principal. You might not want to do that. Okay, so let's delete that. All right, I'm going to turn off the extra to principal. Okay, so now their past due amount is that. And now when I make the payment and hit apply, it applies it properly to both months. Okay, so you got to be careful with that extra principal setting. There's some different zooms here. You can change this. You can see from uh, one year from the first unpaid period. That's the first unpaid period forward, one month or one year. You can go from one year from the start of this month. You can go current calendar year. All right. You can go the entire life of the loan, which is the default setting. Or you can do you know, like current calendar year, these little plus and minus buttons. That'll go to next year, back a year, back a year, and so on. Let's go to current calendar year. There's a print this loan button up here that'll give you a nice little printout of everything that's in this loan. All right, there's each month. You got yearly totals down here. And of course, at the very end, you can see your totals here and there's your payment history. Okay, close that. You can have multiple loans for each person in here. Just add another one, just click on that. Print all loans, prints all loans for this customer, for this client. 
It will break it down by provider if they've got loans from different providers. Back here on the main menu, here's your providers. You can change those. That's pretty simple. Here's where you can print all active loans for all providers. This shows you everything for everybody. There's an accounts receivable right here, which shows you what's due. Okay. Current loan values. And of course, a delete all system data button. This is mostly for me so I can clean the database of any sample data when I release this. But if you're going to be using this in-house and you've got different agents, right, you can clear your system data so they're not getting copies of all your stuff and vice versa. So that is your quick rundown of the Amortization 2.0 database. Uh, there's lots of new stuff in here that I've added. Now, I do have an older loan amortization seminar. So if you want to learn how to build a database like this from scratch, then this seminar has lots of videos that'll teach you exactly what I did to build the previous version of this database. I'm not doing a seminar for this one because I've added a lot of new stuff, mostly enhancements and some extra fields. Basically, this seminar will teach you everything that I did to build the first one. All right, it's a few hours long. It walks you through everything, right? All the code, how I built stuff, the reports. Okay, this is 90% of it. The 2.0 database, I added some enhancements, right? I changed it to record sets. I added some extra bells and whistles. I added the, um, the additional costs if you want to add in the taxes and insurance and late fees and stuff. But the seminar will teach you mostly how this was built. And then the template for 2.0 has all the extra features in it for you to use. So there you go. There's your access amortization template version 2. If you have any questions, please feel free to post them down below. And um, thanks. We'll see you next time.